We are good, we're good, we're doing good. All right, let's, let me get a drink of water here, quick. I already done killed that one. All right, let's start off with a word of prayer because God is already changing some things. All right, let's pray. Father, we just come to your precious holy name of Jesus. We thank you again for this beautiful day. We thank you for it's a lovely, pretty, beautiful day outside. With this, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Um, through the storms and through the good times. God, I ask now, Holy Spirit, have your way with everything that needs to be said today. I already, you're already changing some things, and I want to thank you for that. And so we just pray your blessing. Now upon this word, we stand in the words of Isaiah, that this word will go forth, and it will accomplish the things where into it is sent. In the precious holy name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. All right, we started a series last week. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go any further than this, but it might. It might. God's just doing some things now, and uh, it's just pretty kind of uh, awesome. Awesome, as uh, we were uh, listening to uh, or um, doing the worship time of singing, um, we were, um, I just really was listening to God and changing some things of what to start off with us to say. And um, and, uh, last week was we saw, um, as we saw about uh, the word of your choice, your choice of how, um, uh, kind of used the story of my life about being able, these who are in the uh, Airborne Rangers, who's talked me into jumping off that cliff, you know, it was my choice, I still could have chose not to, you know, I could let fear overcome me and, uh, and not jumped off there and not experience such a, an exhilarating feeling of jumping off of like 30 foot cliff and landing in some water, that will, you know, again, it's a memory that um, we can't take away and the feeling is still, you know, kind of still like it happened yesterday, I can understand that you know that that drop feeling and 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 then that of, of how God still um, uses His word to that and and some things that choices of sin last week that there's judgment in that um, there's judgment in some things that um, that God has um, for the consequences and you're still choice I mean because I, I could have jumped off of there off of that cliff and things could have went bad you know I could have opened I could have just not, I could have laid backwards and did a back smack or something, you know, and it broke every bone in my body, but it didn't, you know, it didn't, didn't happen that way. But in some of our lives, some things that are happening in our lives, um, uh, the choice of sin or not to sin is uh, bringing a lot of consequences. And here, um, some of God's people, the Israelites, chose to stand up against their brothers who were sinning and um, to break a curse. Um, and so if you want to check out last week's uh, word on that, your choice, man, it's an amazing word. It's really awesome. Um, but I believe today's word is going to be even um, better. It is going to be something definitely you might want to share um, because this is something, um, as I was uh, just uh, uh, worshiping um, here, God was just reminding me of yesterday of how, I mean, like our choice yesterday, <clears throat> one of the girls in our youth asked if she could come over to the house and have a birthday party and swim at the pool. And it was like, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day. Well, according to 
earlier that day, the weather uh, weather channel said it's supposed to be a nice day. You know, it'll be sunny for a little while, get really hot. You know, and then um, and then in the afternoons, clouds are coming to come in, and then later in the evening, probably after the party, would be you know some uh, thunderstorms. You know, like we kind of we had Friday night. You know, some really intense um, storms Friday night. You know, late into the night. Um, but as the day went on, the they it, it, right when they started to come about one thirty. The, the the clouds started rolling in with thunder. You know, it's like, oh no, man, it ain't gonna ruin this birthday party. Come on, Lord, just please don't let it. You know, and next thing you know, they got there and they got into the pool and they were swimming, and then all of a sudden, ba boom! And man, the thunder and the lightning started happening. But I'm telling you what, them them youngins that. The um, teenagers, they were not wanting to get out of that pool. Even though it was lightning, it was like, eh, you know, it's like, well, you know, the chances of getting struck are pretty good. So let's just get out for about 10 minutes or so, you know, and, um, and just, you know, and just, and then we'll get back in, you know. So, but the thought about it when I was thinking about it is what God was bringing my memory to it was it was a choice um, to, to um, wade out the storm. And even then, at a certain point, is that as um, soon as some of the, the lightning, you know, I, I could tell by the thunder that it was pushed off a little ways to the north, you know, that it was, even though it was raining, it's still okay to go swimming and have a great time through the storm of the rain. And so it's like, you know, hey, girls, if you want to get back in the pool, you know, it's like, Go right ahead. And they did. And they had an awesome time. Now, how it seems like that some of us, you know, like us older people, is like, I ain't going out in that rain. You know, it's like we got all this, you know, there's a storm happening. And a lot of us are making this choice in life and saying, you know what, I'm not going out into that storm. I'm not going out there. And where some people, you know, that it seems like maybe it's the younger generation. They're saying like, you know, I don't know what kind of storm that in there is, but it looks like we can have some fun in that storm, you know. And so some of the things that are happening and going on, there's a choice that is to be made in our lives, in our countries, wherever we are, that the storm that's happening in our world is it is your choice to get involved in this storm or to sit back and say, I'm out. You know, I am not getting out of it. You could get struck by lightning. The government could throw you in jail. You could get fined. You could get killed. You know, what if you decide to go out to a demonstration and next thing you know, gunshots are happening and you're laying down there bleeding. You know, that's like, you know, what, what is your, what is going to happen? What is the choice you are going to make in the storm of life that is happening right now? It, it still comes down to it's your choice. I'm going to tell you what, yesterday was an awesome day. God showed up. It was so cool that we uh, I, I, we got a chance to talk about things of the Bible and, able, and also in, in a birthday party, at a birthday party, that the opportunity to read God's Word in Revelations chapter 13, that to read God's Word about things that are happening now, you know? And it's because kind of, the, 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 one of the young daughter, uh, girls there, their, her dad was there, and, and so he, he works with his brother in a, in a, um, a lawn care business and how his brother was telling him because he's not a believer and he doesn't you know he doesn't read the word and he doesn't know but his brother was telling him about you know the the conspiracy theories and stuff like that but how the truth he's speaking truth to to him uh, about the the covid and, and the vaccine and the the evidence there and the fda and no approvals and it's a and it's an experiment and stuff like that and he's like he goes he goes so you believe a lot like my my brother you believe a lot like my brother Every, in fact everything you're saying is kind of kind of kind of got going together and this is making a lot of sense to me what what, what you're saying and, and in that but here's the crazy thing is that is because but you're two different um, you're two different races and then that you're agreeing upon something that there's something going on and in agreement and in that I'm like yeah it's definitely this is a God thing Jesus is coming back and and the devil is fighting with everything. He has. That's the, that's the end results of it all. 
But it comes back to to be able to say that yesterday was so amazing to be able to share Jesus at a birthday party through a storm that we chose to not say, pack it up, it's raining, we're going to just quit and go home. No, no, no. We chose to enjoy each other's company in the storm and pull together and conversate and, and love on each other through the storm. It was the most awesome day. And Jaden, oh my goodness, he had a great time with the. And, 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 and Jaden loves BB guns and pellet guns. You know, that's his thing. But to be able to say, sit back there, he connected with these men, these, these other men, uh, and their lives and their families. And he connected with them with something he had a passion for. And so just, yesterday was just an amazing, amazing day because we chose not to pack it up just because it was raining and thundering and lightning and storming we chose to enjoy the time through the storm well what are you doing what are you doing what are you choosing to do with the storm that's happening in your life with the people that God's bringing into your life with the people that that, that you are involved with for whatever reason because some people are only in your life for a moment you know but but we're trying to hold on to them for the lifetime but that God's saying no 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 don't don't hold on to them just if I'll show you what they mean to you, and then they're going to move on. I, and I will show you who is to come and to stay into your life. You know, and so in the storms of these lives of people coming and people going, what is our choice and our involvement in this? I, I, I think about a, a lot of times in our choices, we, we forget that we based, uh, last week we based on this, this thought um, in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So it's the thought of two of a lot of times we're thinking things on just and selfish and prideful reasons. I'm doing this because I like this. One thing that kind of really bothers me is a lot of us are so about the self-help. I mean, yes, I understand you need to help yourself. You need to get well. You need to get better. You need to recognize the, the, the demons that are oppressing you and remove all that stuff and get better because you can't help somebody if you're not better. I understand that. But when you make it a way of life because God's word says give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It's just like a farmer when he plants a seed. That means he's giving giving into the ground, that, that when it grows, when, it, when, when that seed starts to grow, it brings more. So it's understanding there's a transition here. That the heart, if not involved with God and with Jesus Christ, is naturally wicked. And we end up going to the wrong direction. And our choices end up being not for God. So with the basis of, of, of this, the influence of others will either lead you to be blessed or to be cursed. The influence yesterday that was upon me and my family and me on them was to stay, enjoy the moment, choose to weather out the storm together. And yesterday was a blessing. To be able at the end of the party to be able to hug everybody and just, I mean, and, and, and the dad who I had the great conversations with, you know, about Jesus, he like wanted to hug two and three times, you know, and just, just like, man, you mean a lot to me. And, I, and it just like it broke my heart and saying like, man, you don't know what this means to me. It, it, the choice of the relationships, the choice. Jesus went out of his way. There's so much scripture. Maybe that's what, maybe next week we, we, we'll move into that choice there of Jesus, uh, of, of about Jesus and the stories, because that's what's coming to me right now. It, it's that stories of where Jesus went out of his way to go to the sinner's house and have dinner. And a lot of times what we're choosing to do is, no, I don't want to get involved with them people over there because they sinners, you know, they bad people. You know, but you know what? If somebody don't get involved in their life, they're going to die and go to hell. It's not always about being in the building and all holier than thou when these people out here are dying and going to hell. What are you going to choose to do about it? Your choice. When I sat down the other day and talked to, um, um, I call her my daughter as well, but it's Jessie's biological um, sister, and she's having this conversation with me, and she's telling me about our wreck. 
where there's five young people and, and, and two of the teenagers died in the wreck. And the week right before that, a good friend of mine who's only 60 years old died of a heart attack. The, the, the death is real. It's part of the curse of, of this world. No matter where you are, it is not, it is not a, a, a racist. It is not racist of death. It is coming to everyone on this earth unless Jesus Christ comes back and sets up his reign. And until that day happens, death will come. So in that, when death comes knocking on your door, will you be able to go to heaven or go to hell? Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior or not? Your choice, your choice in the storm that's happening in your life. Maybe you be shaking your fist at God that you're blaming Him for the death or you're blaming Him for the loss of the job. You're mad at God, but in reality, there's a curse in this world. Yes, God brings judgment and judgment has consequence, consequences in that and brings pain and suffering yes that is true because he is a just God but in that so how much more you should submit to his authority well, we don't like that word submit it's just as much as the struggle of, of, a, of a marriage of a husband and wife and, and I, I've been reading a lot about that and, and how some people have this struggle with the word submit especially for women I submit to that man. Will that not what God's word teaches? Ooh, the influence of others will either lead you to be blessed or be cursed. Your choice. Your choice. See, look, in Galatians, Galatians chapter, do I have that up here? Yes, I do. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9 says this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So the storm is happening. What are you doing in the storm? Are you saying, I'm out. I'm going to sit back in my house, shut the doors, lock it down. I'm staying put until it's over. Or are you still getting involved? Are you still taking the, 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 the seriousness of, of what's happening? That there, there's people out there that are lost, trying to find their way, asking questions. They don't know what's going on. And these, they're getting all these questions and nobody's available to answer the questions. Nobody's available to pray with them. Nobody's available to show them the word. Are, 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 what is your choice? What are you doing? What you sow is what you're going to reap. A lot of the non-believers, they call it karma. Well, yeah, the word means pretty much the same, but God's word came first. The word says whatever you put out is what you're going to get back into return. Maybe you're putting out some bitterness because you've been hurt. Maybe you've, you're, you're, you're putting out uh, uh, um, this, 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 this I don't care attitude. Because the hurt inside you, it's like, it, it doesn't make sense. This don't make sense to me. So you know what? Fool with it. I don't really care. And reality is you do care. Because it hurt you so bad that you're trying to just shut down. You don't want to shut down. You want to put, you want to put forth something. Because whatever you put forth is what's going to come back to you. It's according to His Word. But to the choice that we're going to look at today in, 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 in a reference to what God really wants to say today is in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament in Numbers chapter 13, that God was taking to, um, he was taking to his people and saying, look, I promised you when you was in Egypt, you were under slavery of the sin there of, uh, uh, of, of, of Egypt and Pharaoh, and, and I was going to get you out and I was going to take you to this place. I'm, I, I promised you that I would take you to this place. 
So we're going to go to this place, and here's what I want you to do. It's called the promised land. It's Canaan. But I want you to send some spies into the land, okay, and just take a tour all through the land, and then come back and report to everybody. You know, you know, and sometimes what happens is when those kind of reports come back, it's like it really messes people with their thinking. But to hear somebody else's testimony of what happened and what they saw. And that's where we, where we pick up in Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13 verse 1 it says, <clears throat> it says this. And it said, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. For each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Let's read on. I, I, that's, I just feel that's what we're supposed to do. All right. The, the Moses, then Moses sent them, the, the, them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people d- who dwell in it are strong or weak or uh, a few or many. Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad. Whether the city they inhabit are like camps of strongholds. Whether the land is rich or poor. And whether there are forests there or not. Being of good courage and bring, bring some of the fruits of the land. Now, time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Now, now, this here, I'm going to show you a picture of something about this that is relative to us in a minute. So now I want to read some more, okay? So just hang with me, all right? Don't, be, don't, don't go off scroll and get bored, all right? This is, this is, today's word is going to be really impactful, very impactful, all right? So verse, in 13, verse 26, uh, it, it numbers verse, chapter 13, verse 26, it starts and it goes off. Now the, they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. They brought back words to them and to tell all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruits. And they're showing them. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and are very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it but when but the men who had gone up with the, with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we so so you see the picture here here's the whole picture okay this is a picture of then and it's, i'm going to show you a picture of now the comparison of what's going on Okay, they get a picture, okay, they go into this land, there's 12 of them, they go in there and they travel through there, they're spying out everything, they bring back these, uh, these, these uh, fruits, well, actually they brought back grapes, and they were, um, from the description, when you read in some other scriptures about the grapes, the grapes are amazingly uh, bountiful, big, and they're so, they're so, it takes two men to carry a strand of the grapes, that's how big and uh, of uh, 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 blessed it is, okay? Um, and so in that, they're, they're sitting back there, and what I hear is, in this right here, I hear this, a choice is being made. 
That there's 12 of them, and 10 of them choose to say, that's too much for us, we can't handle it. The, 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 the storm over there, the people over there are strong, there's no way we can conquer them. There, there's nothing but negativity, there's no way we can do this. But you hear two of them, you hear Caleb and Joshua, uh, 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 they, they, sit there, <clears throat> they sit there and say, no, 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 with God, who is with us, who promised the land, we could take them. We could take them. Let's do it. And let's do it now. Because they're not expecting it. Let's do it. And then there becomes this uh, uh, a move across the people uh, of God. That the majority of the older people, the majority of the older people have this negativity because they feel that there's no way they can fight these guys. Even if God is with us, we can't do it. So God gets mad, and he brings a word, and the word is, okay, because you made the choice, you don't want to go to somewhere, I'm going to make a way for you, and you're going to love it there when you get there. But it's not going to be easy when you get there. Just to be honest, okay? But since you chose, I'm going to make you all go over here and you're all going to die in the desert and you're going to miss out on the blessing. Hear, hear, hear it? Do you hear this word? But you two here, since you believe in me and believe in what I can do through you, you're going to go in. And all those that are 20 years and younger are going to be led. You're going to lead them and you're all going to go into the promised land and they will see. The younger will see the promised land. So there's a group that's saying, I believe. And there's like, you know, ah, we're in, except for the two older guys, Caleb and, and Joshua. It, 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 it was a choice. So what does this have to do with now? So the now is us, where we are. Jesus has been gone for over 2,000 years, and there's been a promise for Jesus to come back and to get us and to go take us to the promised land. And in that, he gave us a picture of the promised land. He says here in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, it says, My father has, has many rooms, and if that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. This is Jesus speaking. And in that, he's giving us a picture that there's a place, a heaven, that there's a promised land that, that, that he has for us. And now it's our choice, our choice. Do we believe him and say, okay, we're going to go. But here's the issue. Here's the issue. Okay, everybody, every one of us is like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, the reality of what we have to go through before it's time to go over there. Here's where I'm going with this. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 15 and 17, it says, And therefore, um, there, um, there are before the throne... Okay, do I have it? There we go. Um, therefore... <clears throat> Therefore, they are before the throne of God. Oh, another picture of heaven. Here we go. Yeah. Um, therefore, they are before the throne of God and, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. Shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heart or any heat. Um, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Verse 21. Then the twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each individual gate was of one pearl and the streets of the city was pure gold like transparent glass and that's the picture of another picture of what Jesus has gone away to build for us to go to heaven one day 
And to do that, that is for the Romans chapter 10. It talks about confessing with your mouth of Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins and being saved. In that, get your name written down in the Lamb's book of life. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Come back, come back, come back. Pay attention. Come back. Here we go. We still have to go through that there's this, there's this storm. There's this giant yet to, to, that that's being seen and many of us make up this doctrine we we, we give into this this uh, pre-rapture mentality if jesus comes before so hallelujah but the idea is to sit back and say there's some giants before us what are we going to do about it how are we going to interact with them god is with us if he is with us then nothing can stop us if it's if that's what it is for our death to happen to be with them then so be it we are so afraid of death that we are willing to say you know what give me the jab you know we're willing to say do whatever it takes to conform to this world because fear has overcome us because here's the fear here's the thing that there's people out there that do not know this and need to know this because they're so afraid of what is to come Revelation chapter 13, here is what, we're gonna, what, what we are yet to face. What is already the pretest that we are looking at right now. The pretest of the government who will rule and who will make fear uh, abundantly across the world, excluding no race. And the government that will enforce and cause the picture was World War II and how, uh, how, how the Nazis came to Israel, uh, Israel and just, just killed so many of God's chosen people, six million of them, because of that hatred for God, for God's people. So how much more that this, God's word, will come as such a war against those that believe in Jesus Christ, and in that, will you choose to say, I'm in no matter what, till death do us part, God Almighty, just like a wedding vow, are you in? Will you choose that? Revelation 13 says this. Then I stood on the sand of, of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority. I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like the beast who is able to make war with him verse 5 and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemous and he was given authority to continue for 42 months then, the, then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his, his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. Hear that. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Hear that. Authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose, name, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. 
He who leads into captivity shall give into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the, the earth, and he had two horns like the lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in the presence and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performed great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceived those who dwell on the earth by these signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image Make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Hold on one second. Let me get a drink. I'm going to finish it. Verse 15. Verse 15. He was granted... Hold on. Okay. He was granted power to give breath... To the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Hear that. Those that do not worship the image, there's power given to him to, that these people will be, to be killed. Okay? Verse 16. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the, his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. I read all of that to say this. To get to the promised land, there are giants we're going to have to face. Just like the Israelites going into Canaan. Knowing that the Malachites and the Canaanites were bigger men than they were. That they were going to have to fight them, but God was going to be with them. And even though this word says that many of the believers of Jesus Christ or those that do not take the mark will be killed, it's a surety that you already are set in the promised land. That those names that were written in the Lamb's book of life, there you will be. That many are walking around with this saying, I will take the passport. I will use this passport. I will get a chip. I will take my phone and put my shot on here saying, I want to go into that store happening in New York City even now. That you can't go places without to buy anything without a mark on your phone right now. The pretest is rolling out. For that of the mark of on your hand or on your forehead. Do you know this? Are you paying attention? To those that hear, let them hear. Do you hear the word of God saying to you, make a choice today. Whom will you serve? Life is getting real. Casual Christians will be casualties. You want to continue to say, I just want to go back to the ways it was. It is not going back to the ways it was. Your country club days of church here in America are over with. The battle is on for not just your soul, but the souls of your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors. It is on. 
The devil knows his time is short as he sees right here because when you read further into Revelations, he knows his sentence is coming to a, a, an end of having his fun and his calamity on this earth that in that he is out without a vengeance. I mean, with, with all a vengeance to be able to destroy as much as he can and deceive as much as he can, to lie as much as he can, to have his way and in that he's going to implement all of this and it says right here it is what is prophesied that is coming to the believers that you are in a battle for your life how are you going to choose to implement how are you going to choose are you going to fold and in that you read scriptures about it, it talks about if you take that chip you're saying you're denying your god do you want to deny your god I'm here to encourage you today to say it's time to get bold and courageous. Just like Caleb and Joshua and the younger generation that God raised up to go into the land. To go into the land and to fight. Well, I'm 70 years old. Ah, you can take your wisdom of 70 years that God uses you, that, that the word that you know is to stand beside somebody who is younger and physically capable of it and encourage them for what physically needs to be done. There is something for you to do in this war of, 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 of souls. That's what this is all, all about. God's love for mankind made a way for all to be saved through Jesus Christ dying on the cross and then raising him from the dead. But the devil is fighting with everything he has to make you mad or to make you turn or to believe a lie that God does not love you. And when he really does, it's because he made a way for salvation through Jesus Christ. Today is the day for a choice. You as believers, it's time to stop uh, taking the law of God and jamming it down people's and, and putting them in a category. It's time for love to conquer all. Jesus' love conquered all sin. It's His compassion that will put Him on that cross for you when you was a sinner. For you to be saved. For not us to be beating down other Christians, but ours to go over there and love them and say, hey, get up, brother, get up, sister. No, 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 don't stay down there. No, that's no good for you. Come on, get up. I love you. I love you. Come with me this way. Sin brings death, and death is forever and no good for you. Come on. Where are you? What are you choosing? What is the choice you are choosing to live? We need to study more of the love of Jesus Christ and be as Jesus. Be Jesus with skin on here on this earth while you still have breath. Because at some point or another, unless Jesus comes and sets that trumpet up and the rapture happens, we're here. We're here and we're to do something about it now. And in that now, we are to be Jesus with skin on. We're to fight the good fight. Because what is coming is an evil, evil government. An antichrist government that means to destroy the people of God. It's written right here. It's prophesied right here. And we're already seeing the, the, the evidence of the capability through the government even now here in America and all across the world because I, I was just watching this video of, I believe it was Italy or something that was that, that, that they had the police were patrolling downtown of, a, of an, a city there and they were asking you, if you were sitting outside at a restaurant having a cup of coffee or at a restaurant or something, you know, eating their food or something like that, if you didn't have the COVID little passport on your phone, they were arresting you and taking you to jail and prosecuting you for being out in public without having the vaccine and the vaccine card see the devil's not stupid he's slick we thought it was going to come one way and he came in a different way and there's a different way because when you read scriptures it talks about the, the pharmaceuticals it talks about the medicine and then that those are the witchcraft the ways the witchcraft that is, is to sneak in through the back door and just hit, hit you when you, when you don't see it coming Today's today, you make a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to be fearful like the, the ten guys? Say, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. Fold. And you're going to miss out on the blessings of God? 
Or are you going to stay strong and courageous and say, if God is with me, then anything is possible. Today is your choice. Your choice. As we close, I challenge you. I challenge you believers all over the world, wherever you're watching, to take some time to self-reflect. Say, okay, if this comes my way, what am I going to do? Think about it. Think about it. I've already told my, my, I've already told my daughter, I've already made plans. Look, here, here Jesse, here, Jaden. Okay, here's where the money is. If, I get, if something happens and I get put in jail because of, of Jesus Christ, and I'm able to be bailed out. If I'm able to be bailed out, I might not even be able to be bailed out. Because like when you go to, like you go to China, over there, they, you, you're automatically in for three years. Three years. You preach Jesus Christ as a pastor, and in that three years, you're being tortured. And the only way you're getting taken care of is if people outside bring stuff to you to take care of you. That, that, that government over there, they would rather you die within the three years. That's the kind of government is trying to come here. Why do you think the government, the, 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 the leaders that are in charge right now, they're so buddy buddies with China right now. They want America to fold. But many of you are not from there. You're not, you're not, many of you from, are, are from the Middle East. Some of you are from, from, from Africa and areas. Some of you are from, from Brazil and down in that area. It's just still, it's, it's coming around the world. It's not exclusive to one place. It's the world. What are you going to choose to do when it comes to you? <clears throat> Ask yourself the question as we pray. Father, we just come to you in the precious holy name of Jesus again to thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you now that you will take the words of Isaiah, that you will take this and accomplish the things wherein to it is meant to go, pierce the heart, and convict and draw and make uh, your people stronger in their faith and believing you have it all under control. Evil, being bad, killing people or not. You are a sovereign God. And Father, we just ask now those today that don't know you as Lord and Savior, maybe they just ran across this and just they, that, that if today they died, they don't know where they would go for eternity when they leave this body. That they would pray and say, ah, you know what? I'm going to follow this Jesus. I believe in this Jesus. That they would pray with me this, uh, this, this prayer of repentance and salvation. Saying, uh, uh, as in Romans says, if you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Saying, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I, I love you. Thank you for uh, Jesus dying on the cross for my sins. I believe, you, you, Jesus, you died on the cross and God, you raised him from the dead for my salvation. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new person from the inside out and change me. Thank you for cleaning me up and removing all my sins. Thank you for writing my name down in that book of life. Thank you for saving me. I believe. I believe. In Jesus' name. Hear their prayer of salvation. Whatever it is, how they word it, God, hear them. And give them the courage to get involved in some Bible study somewhere or some, uh, uh, or some online something or, or even get involved into a local church. Um, God, just give them the courage to tell somebody that today they prayed that prayer and asked Jesus to save them. God, again, I pray your blessings upon everyone that's watching on this, this video whether it be through the YouTube or the live of Facebook. God, I just pray your blessing upon them that this week you'll show up and show off your amazing love for them. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you for what you did for my sins. Thank you for always being there for me, God. Thank you for being an amazing father. Thank you for your great wisdom when I ask and seek you for it. And Holy Spirit, thank you for being such an amazing teacher. Still need you so much. I still need to learn so much more. So humbling, that I, I, I don't. I just. I, I even scratched a little bit. I ain't even scratched. I feel like I'm still in kindergarten and stuff that I'm learning. God, I love you. Bless this people. Bless this church and these people here. In the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen.